Hi friends. Today we are talking about PCOS, what it is. It is such a common thing to be misunderstood. I'm going to break down the facts for you right here. Welcome back. Today I'm going over PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So PCOS is a hormone disorder that causes you not to ovulate. Now trust me, PCOS gets commonly misunderstood. And one of my biggest pet peeves as a fertility doctor is that many people out there who are not as trained as myself, or maybe who just don't understand the physiology of PCOS, they will actually tell you that this is a problem of having low progesterone. No, 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 no. Okay. But that is like understanding that the problem is secondary to something else. Yes, that is a symptom, but the true root cause is a hormone disturbance that leads you not to ovulate. And if you don't ovulate, you don't make progesterone. So let's just go over what PCOS is. First of all, I hate the name polycystic ovarian syndrome. Who named it? It's a terrible name. So I hate this name. However, what it really refers to is the cysts that we're talking about in PCOS are tiny fluid filled follicles. A fluid filled structure on ultrasound is a cyst by definition, but really these cysts aren't problems. Follicles are normal in the eggs. You just have more than a normal number. So officially in order to diagnose PCOS, you need two out of three. Okay. So if we talk about the three things that you need, number one, irregular periods. So if your periods are irregular, that's part of the diagnostic criteria. Number two, high androgen symptoms. Androgens are like testosterone or DHEAS. Those are hormones made from the ovary or the adrenal gland, and they can cause acne or hair growth. So having either symptoms, acne or hair growth, or actually having your blood checked and having high levels of these, that would also meet diagnostic criteria. And number three is a special ultrasound appearance of your ovaries being polycystic, meaning lots of little small follicles or high antral follicle count. That's the official Rotterdam criteria. This is how a doctor should diagnose your PCOS. That said, if you have two out of the three, so if you have irregular cycles and acne, your doctor may not order an ultrasound because you've already met the criteria. So depending on what you're presenting with and what your goals are, doctors may do different things. To me, as a fertility doctor, I do ultrasound all the time. It is one of the top ways that I can evaluate you. So you see me use ultrasound frequently, but you don't always have to. So even though that's the diagnostic criteria, Sometimes that doesn't really like make sense. Like what's the problem? Okay. Those things don't exactly explain the problem. They are the symptoms. So I'm going to draw you a picture. So not the world's best artist, but ta-da. So what you have here is you have a pituitary gland and you have the ovary. Okay. So that's normal. Then what's supposed to normally happen is the brain is going to send out a hormone called FSH. FSH is a well-named hormone that stimulates follicles to grow. So I always like to use the analogy that there's a vault inside the ovary and inside the vault are all the eggs you're ever going to have. So when you're born, vault is full. When you go through menopause, vault is empty. Now every month you have a group of eggs all come out of the vault and you can see that group on ultrasound. So you can't see into the vault. It's like a secret, but you can see the group that comes out and that group, each egg grows inside a follicle. So if you were to go look on ultrasound you would see a lot of follicles in the ovary and those would be cysts, fluid filled structures. Each follicle has one egg inside. Now when the brain sends out FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, it talks to the ovary and if it's, everything's working normal, the ovary then responds and one follicle will grow and that egg will mature and that's the one you're ovulating. Now, one of my favorite things about the ovary is that it's a hormone producing factory. So when the ovary does its job, it's making estrogen. That's its hormone de jour. But when things stop working, it switches gears and it starts making another hormone, which is testosterone. So what really happens in PCOS? I like to be, think of it as being born with a full vault. So with a full vault, what that means is that your ovary has a lot of eggs. And one cool thing about the body is that the more eggs that are in the vault, the more that are released every month and the fewer eggs that are in the vault, the fewer that are released every month. And so when you go through this process, if you have a lot of eggs, more are going to come out every month. That diagnostic criteria of lots of follicles, it can look like that. 
But what that means is there's a lot of follicles, so a lot of eggs are coming out of the vault at once. Well, your brain sends out a normal amount of FSH, but now it's getting diluted between all of those small follicles. And so none of them is chosen to respond. They just sit there doing nothing. Okay, well, what actually happens is they're not really doing nothing. They're all making a teeny weeny bit of estrogen and estrogen's what talks back to the brain. So normally estrogen is only made when the body is ovulating. So high doses tell the brain, cool, cool, cool. Don't send out any more FSH or we're good. We're making an egg. But when all of these make a teeny little bit, it is enough signal that tells the brain we're cool. So the brain doesn't send out more FSH. So you're stuck in this pathway with a little bit of FSH, a little bit of estradiol and no ovulation. And as I said, hormone producing factor here. So if this is stuck in circuit, guess what start happening? Well, FSH has a sister hormone called LH. And what LH does is it is also released from the brain and it works on the ovary in a different way. And what it starts to tell the ovary to do is make testosterone, make testosterone. So if the ovary is not ovulating, it's not making estrogen, hormone producing factory can't do it. Then it starts making, you got it. Do you see it? T, it starts making testosterone. Okay, and this testosterone is what leads to acne and hair growth. So this is part of the problem. Other things that are really confusing about PCOS is this whole overweight phenomenon. And I like to describe that there's really two forms of PCOS. There is your thin phenotype, which has nothing at all to do with weight gain. Really PCOS hormone issue here in the ovary. It's just an ovarian endocrine disorder. The ovary doesn't produce the hormones it's supposed to because it gets upset and kind of trapped by this pathway of not doing anything, not enough FSH coming out. And then it starts making the testosterone. So it gets stuck here. Other things that happen is like high testosterone levels in the ovary also cause insulin resistance. It can cause metabolic changes that we often see with PCOS. It can lead to diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all kinds of issues. To complicate things, fat cells also make estrogen. Okay. So if you are overweight and you have a lot of fat cells, those fat cells make estrogen. And then that estrogen talks to the brain and tells the brain to not send out enough FSH. And so you see PCOS also in women who are overweight, but the confusing thing there is women often hear, Oh, well lose 10% of your body weight and you'll start to ovulate again. Okay. That is true if you have extra estrogen being made and because then in those cases, that extra estrogen will drop if you lose weight. However, if you have thin PCOS and it's just a hormone dysfunction, do not go and lose weight because it's not gonna make any difference. That's not the root cause of your problem. So if you've had irregular cycles your whole life when you were thin and now you're overweight, weight loss may not be as big of a player in this game for you. If you're thin, you don't need to lose weight, okay? That's not gonna help your problem here. If you're overweight, then trying to lose some weight is always gonna be recommended. Now, a quick note, we're gonna do a follow-up video about questions on PCOS, so ask them in the comments, and also talk about different treatment options. But the reason why, when you look at this, that birth control pills are so popular. One is because it gives you constant levels of estrogen and progesterone. One of the biggest risks with PCOS you often hear about is endometrial cancer. When we talk about risks on the large scale, endometrial cancer is because all these small follicles making this little bit of estrogen, it doesn't just talk to the brain, it also talks to the uterus. And when it talks to the uterus, what it tells the uterine lining to do is fill up and grow, preparing for an implantation that's never gonna happen because you don't ovulate. So if you just have this lining that's growing the whole time, so it's getting really fluffy and you're not bleeding it off like you're supposed to because you never have that progesterone rise and fall that comes with ovulation, and then you get, it can be called hyperplasia and that can turn into cancer. And so low progesterone on itself is just a sign that you're not ovulating. It can actually lead to endometrial cancer. So you'll hear doctors sometimes say protecting the endometrium is giving you some progesterone or inciting a withdrawal bleed or doing something so that those cells don't turn into cancer because we don't want you to get the worst outcome that could happen from this disease. Again, low progesterone is not the problem. The problem is all this stuff. Low progesterone is a symptom because if you don't ovulate, you don't make progesterone. That's the only hormone that is made simply from ovulation. It's not gonna exist in your body without ovulation. If you are trying to get pregnant and your periods are irregular, you need to see a doctor. End of story. 
If your periods are irregular and you have symptoms of PCOS, you may want to see a doctor even before you're trying to get pregnant. Sometimes lifestyle interventions like diet supplements or losing weight, if applicable to you, can help this phenomenon. Sometimes you're already really healthy and you just have really refractory PCOS, meaning you're going to need medications to help you ovulate, and that's okay. That's what your friendly fertility doctors are here for. We are here to help you get to that next step of the game. What I don't want is all this stigma with PCOS that we always see. I want women to understand that low progesterone is not the problem here. Low progesterone is a symptom. The problem is it's just a hormone dysfunction. And when your other endocrine glands don't function well, nobody goes and puts a big stigma on. So let's break the stigma with PCOS. Let's educate ourselves and others. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I would love it if you'd subscribe to the channel so I can bring more fertility related education and information to you. You can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, and you can check out the As a Woman podcast. The podcast has tons of fertility related episodes and also female empowerment where I work to bring information to you. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm.